books. We just spent over seven grand so we can unbox them for you and uh, probably make Mac people mad. We're gonna do the 14 inch first because I like it more, the 16's too heavy. The smell of Apple products when you first open them, absolutely fantastic. This smells like how a new laptop should smell. Excellent job, guys. Big feature here for the M2 generation. The MagSafe port or adapter chummy is color matched to your laptop. Oh, stickers. Oh, we know what happens when there's stickers in the box. It's one of the worst things I've ever done. <laughs> MacBook Pro, that's what it is. Normally in these, it tells you to plug it in and turn it on. I don't see that here, so I'm gonna be absolutely lost. For the charger, we get 67 watts, and in my experience using the 14-inch MacBook Pro, this thing gives you battery life fast. It is absolutely fantastic how it just, it just crams those electrons into the battery, like what, zero to 100% in like a little bit over an hour, I think. And oh my God, it's so heavy. Here we have the 16 inch. We now know that's a different color than our 14. And the charger we get in here is 140 watts. That's a lot of juice, especially for a laptop like this. I've got the XPS 15, let's just make everyone mad. There we go, everyone's mad now. One thing that is annoying about this style of charger is that the whole power brick plugs directly into the wall and it means that you might not be able to use the outlets that are around it. Now it is possible to get an extra cable that goes on here, but it's not included in the box. And like, Andy, do you know anyone that's done that? Yeah, they used to include it in the box. They don't anymore. In fairness, Andy brought me this cable right here and it is just a standard connection in this, but uh, that looks kind of terrible. It does work. All right, let's have a look at how much these gentlemen weigh. Here's the 14 inch. Three and a half pounds. 16 inch is 4.8 pounds. I honestly thought that it was more than that. But if we compare that to, how's the XPS 15? I think that's right around the same. 4.3, so that is going to be noticeable. Old 14 inch, 3.5. And finally representing thin and lights, we have the HP Dragonfly, 2.8 pounds. So that's way less weight and also very expensive and not very powerful. <laughs> have a gander at the IO here. So on the 14 inch, we have headphone microphone combo, two Thunderbolts, MagSafe charger. Around on the other side, we have HDMI. It's now HDMI 2.1. Thank you, that was very necessary. Apple support for external displays, <laughs> terrible. We also have another Thunderbolt 4 and a full size SD card reader. Man, I absolutely love that. 16 inch is basically the same. Unsurprisingly, the build quality is exceptional. We can push pretty hard on it here. Barely any flex anywhere. Like I'm really giving her on the keyboard. There's like a tiny bit of deflection. It's fine. Same with the 16 inch. I don't even have to touch it, but you all know that Apple makes very well-made products. <laughs> now, one thing that really, really annoys me about these is the way that you open it. There's a little indent right here, which means that you naturally are going to open it right there. In doing that, every single time that you open it, you put a fingerprint right over your webcam, which means that every single time that I go on a video call, it looks like that there's Vaseline all over it because I've been fingerprinting it every single time that I open it. And then it's kind of like, ah, oh, crap, I look terrible. And then you go and have to go like that. And it's kind of weird. You're opening it wrong. I'm open, how am I supposed to open it, Mr. Jake? What? Don't dig your finger in. Don't dig my <laughs> finger. Look at where your thumb is when you open it. It's funny as Do you not have fingerprints over your webcam? No, everywhere else but my webcam. Okay, bring, bring it over here. The whole thing's disgusting, but particularly your webcam right here. Look, oh, it's so can, gross. Can you guys see this? Mac MacBooks aren't even touch screen and my screen's disgusting. Well, I wasn't planning on disk speed test being our first thing that we do, but it is very important because Apple are so in the 14 inch MacBook Pro, much like they did on some of the earlier revisions of their laptops, you're getting SSDs. An SSD is made up of a bunch of different like chips that you put on and having more of them is better because you can access them in parallel instead of just one at a time. And now on this guy right here, even though it is a metric buttload of money, you only get one, which means that compared to our 14 inch that we have right here, 
it should be worse at disc stuff. I don't know if we can accurately compare these, unfortunately. My 14 inch has a terabyte SSD. Well, this isn't a perfect test, but let's run it and just see what happens. And while we wait for that, let's tell you about our sponsor. Thank you to Dbrand for sponsoring this video. Their skins are made from high quality 3M vinyl that is true texture. The patented adhesive is guaranteed to leave no residue on your device if you want to change up your skin or just take it off if it's getting a little bit old. Their grip cases for your phone or AirPods are super durable and a snug fit. I have it on my phone right now, it's great. Go to shortlinus.com. It says, please make a big deal about the URL. I guess they want Linus to get mad about it. I don't know, I don't care, he's short. And buy your overpriced stickers today. They spent a lot of money on that URL and they want to make their money back somehow. Well, we are seeing considerably less performance on this SSD. Not that it's really fair, but. So yeah, it is not a perfect test, but we've been running the good old disk speed test for a while now, and we are seeing pretty consistent a lot faster on the old one, like nearly double. It's like actually thrashing it at SSD stuff. So yeah, it's just worse. That sucks, Apple, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> For the specs on this guy, we get 10 CPU cores, so that's six performance cores and four efficiency cores. We also have 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, that is slow. Now, first of all, compared to when they had the butterfly switches, this is just so, so much better, but it's not a perfect keyboard. Now, I would give this a really strong A, but probably not an A+. But I am noticing some very slight inconsistencies in the keys. So like if I'm pushing on the side of this one, I can get a fair bit of deflection. Whereas like over here, it feels a lot stiffer. Like I'm not able to deflect these nearly as much. Like the S key, way stiffer side to side. It wouldn't be a huge issue, but there isn't a whole lot of throw. And there also isn't a whole lot of feedback when you press them. So I find it sometimes a little bit confusing with my fingers to know exactly what I'm doing. Again, very good keyboard, but it's not the best on the market. What is the best on the market though, is the trackpad. Everybody knows Apple's trackpads, fantastic, they still do it. it. Is to the point where Windows laptops have caught up. So like the trackpad on the HP Dragonfly, I like it a little bit more. Not a lot more, but it's like, they're in the same league. They're both A pluses. Which one you like more just kind of depends on what you like. What's well, not an A plus though, look at this. Wow, I sure wish that I had a touch screen. If only Apple, you know, had a device where they already did the R&D to make one of the best touch screens on the market. Oh wait, they did, they make the fucking iPad, but they just can't make it work on this. Damn it guys. I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I don't need a touch screen on. You're wrong. I like touch screens a lot and I'm the one that's doing this review. So I'm getting mad about it. Moving over to the 16 inch, the specs again, fantastic. So it's a 12 core CPU, eight performance cores, four efficiency cores, as well as a 38 core GPU. I don't really know exactly what that means, but you can't really game on it anyway. So doesn't really matter. <laughs> on this one, we also have 32 terabytes of RAM. Wait. On this one, we also have 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Yep, once again, keyboard's fantastic. It's an A, but not quite an A+. This trackpad though, man, especially on the 16 inch, in a lot of situations on Windows laptops, they just don't have the budget to develop two separate SKUs for the trackpad. So you might get like, Dell's pretty bad for this on the XPS where they have an amazing trackpad on the 15 inch. You can see it right here, it takes up almost all of this space. But then on the XPS 17, they just reuse this trackpad and don't use up all of that. Whereas on the MacBook, yep, all of it. This is, is this the largest trackpad that you can get on a laptop? Probably is. Jake just asked if the palm rest and everything's good. Yeah, it's fantastic. They have gone a little bit sharp on the edges here. So sharp edge there, if we look over here, sharp edge right there, don't like it. I absolutely love HP's pillow corners. Having a rounded over corner right there is just so nice for your wrists. That said, these are both more than large enough for my hands to fit on it, so not really an issue. All right, let's have a look at the display here. And I don't even really need to look at it to just tell you it's absolutely fantastic. The resolutions are a little bit strange, so it's 3,024 pixels by 1964. On the 16, it's 
34, 56 by 22, 34. I don't really know why they chose those resolutions, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Display is fantastic. Now they do claim 1600 nit peak brightness, which it does do, but that's like if you have HDR content and there's like a little bright blip right there, that's gonna get to 1600. If the whole panel's white or whatever, you're not going to get that. It's gonna be more around like 500-ish. Doesn't matter. Still one of the best on the market. It can be argued that the OLED on something like the XPS 15 is better just because of the black levels. Now, I don't know if you can tell here, but the black levels on the OLED screen of the XPS 15 just absolutely murder the MacBook. So if you are going to get something with an OLED display, especially in dark situations, it's gonna look better. That said, in bright rooms, MacBook wins. And also, the largest problem with OLED displays is battery drain. I would very, very happily take a MacBook with the liquid retina that actually gets like 15, 16 hours compared to this piece of that gets like four. So our options are Counter-Strike and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I just want to see what games I can actually play on this. I mean, I don't even care about the performance. Having a, what was it, 38 core GPU does not matter if all that you can play is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Okay, so of the games that I regularly enjoy, Rocket League is what I can play on this. We are getting 32.8 megabytes per second down. This does have Wi-Fi 6E. That's one of the big upgrades for the M2, but that seems fine. I'm quite certain that I've seen like 40, 50 megabytes per second down here on Windows laptops. Well, Rocket League downloads, let's have a little speaker shootout. All right, new one, old one. I think I like the new one more. They've taken the EQ and sort of softened it a bit. So the old one had a lot of extra bass and a lot of extra trouble. This one right here, I think the quality of the components is the same, but they've just taken her a little bit more flat. So the highs are a bit less harsh and the bass is a bit less muddy. I like it. Let's compare it to the Dragonfly. Murdered, absolutely murdered. So this is the sort of thing where before I was saying that like, I liked the sound of the HP more than the MacBook because it was just way clearer. Now that they've fixed the EQ, I like the 14 inch MacBook Pro more. I think we have to call that one a draw. Those are incredibly similar sounding speakers. Now it's 16 inch time. Can it beat the XPS 15? All right, 16 inch MacBook Pro. Sixteen-inch MacBook Pro wins, not by a lot, but the highs are just a little bit smoother and the bass is a bit less crunchy. It's a better sounding device. Now, that said, some people in the comments are probably going to be like, "Oh, no, no, no. remember through this microphone, through YouTube compression, through your speakers that are probably trash. That's not how they actually sound. Just, just trust what we're saying." Now, gaming. Despite Steam saying that there's Mac support for Rocket League, if you have an M1 or M2. You can't play it. Fantastic. Wow, I love gaming on Mac. It's such a good time. Sidetrack a bit here, but these are very good laptops with a lot of battery life and a lot of good things going for them. And I just cannot use one. Now, Mac OS is fine. If you're used to Windows, you can get used to Mac OS in like a week, doesn't really matter, vice versa. They all do essentially the same crap. Problem is there's a lot of applications that only work on Windows that simply do not run on Mac. I need to open up SolidWorks files fairly regularly. Can't do it on this, simply not an option. There's loads of other just like weird controller softwares and like niche engineering things and so on. Doesn't work on this piece of shit. In the past when you had the Intel chips, you could just, you know, install parallels and stuff and it worked and now you can't. So if you wanna run SolidWorks on this, you don't. You go out and buy an XPS 15. The flip side of this, of course, is if you are going to be a filming person, like an Andy over there. Everything creative-wise works fantastic on this. You've got the good old SD card reader, <laughs> stick her in, load all your photos in, fantastic. You've got the display, 
it's all going to look really good and run very fast. One of the things Apple has apparently upgraded quite a bit on this is the webcam. Now, is it acceptable to have a notch? We haven't brought up the notch yet, but just in general, thoughts on the notch? It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's actually not all that bad, but also it just looks terrible, especially on something like the 14 Pro with the M1. It's like, oh, good job, guys. You got an absolute sh tier 720p webcam in this much space. Like, how did they manage it when people like Dell, look at this, look at how much space they have for a webcam that is of the same tier. Oh, and they also have IR facial recognition here. Apple doesn't give you that. Where's yeah, face where's ID? your face ID? Come on, they spent all that time and money figuring it out and they have the freaking space. Uh, first thing, we need to uh, make this realistic and simulate how you're going to open it up. Wow, that uh, looks pretty bad. <laughs> it is definitely way better on the new one though. So here we have the 14 inch MacBook Pro M1. I'm going to clean her off now. And that didn't help a whole lot, but at the same time, this is a perfectly usable webcam. We have a very, difficult scene right here. So very bright light, very dark stuff. It doesn't care, it's properly exposing for my face. For the new 1080p webcam, it is just clearly better. Like the 720p one looks like there's a softening filter on my face because it just doesn't have the pixels for it. This one just looks way more natural. Like, you know, it's just very clear on the 1080p one that like, you know, it looks like that I have makeup on, on the 720p because it just isn't sharp enough to, I don't know look at my face like it actually is. Now, comparison. Here we have the HP EliteBook Dragonfly, which instead of a 1080p webcam, has a 1440p webcam. Here is the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And moving over to the HP EliteBook Dragonfly, and I think Apple's taking a win in this one right here, but the way that it's exposing for my skin and like, the tones just look so much more natural on the MacBook compared to HP. HP is still good, and I guess it has higher resolution, not that that really matters. But I'm kind of like a weird orangey tone, like I'm very red looking, whereas MacBook, you know, it's the winter time. I am very white at the moment, and it is accurately reflected right here. And here is the big issue with the 14 inch. So we can see we have 512 gigabytes of storage, and it is all right there. On the old one, we have two little storage chummies and it would have been very easy for Apple instead of buying one 512 to just get two 256s, put them right there. You would have a much faster SSD and that is unacceptable on something that's this expensive. Now, one kind of interesting thing about the new 14 inch also is that it looks like the heat sink's a little bit smaller or not even the heat sink, but the cold plate on top of the CPU GPU. This means that probably they've made just the die size smaller, or maybe not the die size, but the package size smaller for the CPU GPU. And it's just right in here. That doesn't really matter performance wise. It's just kind of interesting. For the 16 inch, you get one heat pipe. Now it is actually amazing the level of performance that they're able to get out of something with this medium tier cooler situation. This is the sort of thing where Apple has such an efficiency advantage that they can get away with just worse cooling than everything in this class and it's fine because, well, efficiency, it's great. Okay, let's have a look at the battery. So on the 14 inch, you get a 70 watt hour battery. It absolutely poops on everything Windows, like not even comparable. I am using the HP Dragonfly. That's about as close as you can get. And that's not a powerful laptop. Another thing that's very notable about the efficiency that we have in here is that the power that you can get with this on battery is very similar to the performance that you can get with it plugged into the wall. With a lot of Windows machines, particularly with Intel's really fast and hot boys, you will have a massive performance drop when you go from plugged in to out and on the go. It sucks. It, it's just something that Apple simply does better. Also on the 16 inch, we get a 99.6 watt hour battery. Hundreds the max that you can take on a plane. So excellent work. That's as good as this could be. And again, battery life. How often do you charge your laptop, Jake? Never. 
Never, yeah, exactly. You can legitimately go two weeks without plugging this in and it is fine. But there's one thing that I need to discuss. Windows Modern Standby, except it's on Apple this time and I've been having very similar issues. It's not very often, but particularly when kind of like Jake said, you can go two weeks without charging your laptop on those occasional times where it just drains itself for no reason, like 40% to zero in a you chuck it in your bag and leave. It can actually be a travesty because it's so good normally that you might just have left your charger at home or at work or somewhere and you open up and you're like, oh, f me. Now, if you do have your charger, again, it charges these really fast, so it's not a huge, huge issue, but I am very disappointed that Apple has the same kind of a problem. Just shows you, laptops are not phones. They don't always need to be connected to the internet and stuff. Please, just good old sleep. Totally shut her down. Now the price. You guys know that Apple devices are expensive and these are also very expensive, but at the same time, it's kind of justified these days. So the 14 inch comes in just under two grand. If you want something that just has lots of battery, beautiful display, and pretty good everything else, the Windows doesn't have an answer right now. Like there just simply is nothing else that is able to get that kind of battery life and that kind of power. Same with 16 inch, it was what, $3,400? You buy something like the XPS 15, which is sort of the closest competitor. It is cheaper, but the battery life is not even close, not even in the same league. You have the OLED display on this thing, six hours max away from the wall. And a lot of the time I'm getting more like four. It's so big of a gap in the battery life that, yeah, if you don't need to do engineering, buy one of these. Like seriously, they're fantastic. And you know what's also fantastic? You, beautiful viewer. So if you like this video, hit like, get subscribed, and just have a fantastic day. See you later.